Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to another video, to another Witch Wednesday and today we are doing the final part of the Cornelia and Caleb relationship timeline from the Witch TV show. When we left off last time we covered the relationship arc, uh, the breakup arc that is A is for Anonymous through F is for Facades. So um, the next episode is G is for Garbage but it's actually the very first episode of the entire series that Caleb isn't in apart from like a two second flashback. So uh, we'll move right on to H's for Hunted. So this episode takes place on the last day of school before summer and Elion has decided it's time to leave her school life behind and return to Meridian full time. But first, there's a school dance to attend. So Curly and Caleb are dancing together at the party and they've even coordinated and both wore black formal wear and are looking very dashing icons and Caleb takes the opportunity to ask Cornelia a question. Are you sure you're okay with me going back to Meridian? Don't love it but your world needs you and besides I've learned not to sweat little things like which planet you're on. I absolutely love this scene because we can see here how much they have grown since the first six episodes of this season. The whole problem back then was that they didn't communicate, they didn't have conversations, they weren't discussing their relationship in any meaningful way and they were getting absolutely nowhere. Whereas here, Caleb is directly asking her a question and she's giving him a direct answer and she's being honest about her feelings and yeah, like finally, it's about time. And it shows that, you know, having to go through all of that at the start of the season has really made their relationship stronger because now, you know, they they can see um you know, now they can see what they need to do, that they need to have these conversations if they want this relationship to work, and they do. And I like that Cornelia is honest about her feelings. She doesn't just cover it up and say like, yeah, no, I'm totally fine with it, because Caleb knows, Caleb knows that that's bullshit. Caleb knows that Cornelia did not spend six episodes moaning about him being on Meridian just to turn around and be like, I'm totally fine with you going back to Meridian. Like, she's not, she's not. So she says outright, she's like, I don't love it. I, you know, she doesn't really want him to be on Meridian all the time, but that his world needs him. And I th and I think Cornelia's wording here is significant. I've learned not to sweat little things. She has learned. She's learned and she has grown. The events of F is for Facades have changed her outlook on their relationship where she's thinking to herself now like, I wasted all that time that I could have been with Caleb because we were arguing about stupid shit that didn't matter. What is important is that we are together and it doesn't matter if that means that we have to live on two separate worlds. I just want us to be in our relationship. So, you know, she's decided that them being on different planets is, as she puts it, a little thing, you know? She's not sweating little things like which planet he's on, you know? She no longer considers that a significant barrier to their relationship. She considers that a small obstacle, basically, but that it doesn't really matter to her anymore. She's just happy for them to be in their relationship, even if it means that they're on different planets. And that is such a grow up from how she was at the start of the season, you know, for her being like, you're choosing Meridian over me to being like, I've learned not to sweat little things like which planet you're on. I love it. I love it. It's so good. I'm so happy for them. This is all I've wanted. Like all of that suffering through all of that nonsense in the past, the previous, uh, episodes has finally brought us to this moment where um I feel like this is the writers putting the end on the real the breakup arc because you know when we last saw them talking to each other in F is for Facades it was just her being like I promised to break up with them I swear and then we see them hugging whereas this I feel like is is the final like lid on the breakup arc to say that Cornelia and Caleb are truly solid again that nonsense will not happen again they're not going to go through another breakup arc that they have now sorted out their relationship problems. Cornelia is no longer worried about them being on different planets and their relationship is, is solid going forward. And I, I really appreciate the writers putting that in to just make sure that we know once and for all that um, that whole thing is over, that it's not going to happen again. I think it's also worth mentioning that she's happy to be seen dancing with them now after she stormed off way back and walked this way. Now she's like dancing with them and she's totally fine. So that's nice. <laughs> There's also this tiny moment later in the episode where Cornelia is whispering in his ear, which I just think is cute. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 
In Eyes for Illusion, the witch girls are away on holiday at Cormoran Beach with Irma's family, whilst Caleb and Blanc hunt the knights of vengeance on Meridian. Even so, this episode gives us a few good Cornelia and Caleb related moments. So first we have this scene where Cornelia, Will and Trani are sunbathing and for context, this isn't Halen that's speaking to them. That's Nerissa Glamour does Halen. You know what would make this trip perfect? Seven more bathrooms? If Caleb were here. Oh please, you and Caleb can't go five minutes without fighting. If you actually spent time together, you'd be vacationing in Dumpsville. I feel really bad for Cornelia in this scene because obviously she wishes that Caleb was here with her. She always wants him to be there with her. But considering it's not been that long since the breakup arc, Nerissa reminding her of it is just really cruel. I mean, that's the point. That's why she said it, because she's trying to get into their heads. But still, it's cruel. Later, Nerissa glamours herself as well and approaches the real Halen, saying that she had to get away from Cornelia because she won't stop babbling about Caleb. To which Halen replies, yeah, obsessed much? And you know, this makes me laugh because it's actually Nerissa moaning about having to listen to her son's girlfriend to fawn over him and that's just really, really hilarious. <laughs> of course, this is Witch, so the holiday would not be complete without the Knights of Vengeance showing up to attack the girls on the beach. Cornelia gets herself into a spot of bother when instead of blocking the possessed June buggy with her powers, she actually creates a big old ramp so that it just comes clattering down on her head. Lucky for her, by the power of, god, I don't know, the local bus service. I don't know how Caleb and Blunt got to the beach, but never mind. Caleb hasn't appeared on the beach for a rescue. Observe. <laughs> nice timing, boyfriend. Just part of my job description. Eh, Blank hate to spoil moment, but you couple still in trouble! There is a lot we could say about how the animators chose to draw this scene. I mean, I swear they forgot that they were drawing a 14 year old girl and a 16 year old boy. Supposedly this was based on the kiss from from here to eternity but like even so what the fuck are you doing? These are literal children like what the fuck. Anyway <laughs> in any case I do love that scene. I just love him appearing out of nowhere with like no warning that he's even got to the beach and just saving her and like I say we can compare this to when he saved her in D is for Dangerous and back then she was annoyed and she was like nice of you to show up in this sarcastic tone, whereas now she's like sweet and flirty and she's like nice timing boyfriend and kisses him. So, uh, you know, growth. I also love Caleb's wording. You know, he says it's in his job description to have nice timing and save her life. And considering one of her big issues during the breakup arc was him being too preoccupied with his job, I think it's actually like meaningful that he's describing saving her as part of his job because she is part of his job. Being her boyfriend is his job. Like, his work is important to him, but she is saving her as part of his work. What I'm trying to say is that protecting her is as important to him as protecting his world. She is as much of a priority to him as his, his job is. And that he's like, yeah, my job is to be like Mr. Rebel Leader Honor Guard Man, but my job is also to be your boyfriend. So I think that's really sweet. Also, Lieutenant of the Corn Lib ship, I <laughs> I keep saying like SS Corn Lib. Just so you know, I absolutely hate Corn Lib as a name. It sounds fucking awful. Um Lieutenant of the Curly and Caleb ship Blanc is uh shipping out here on the sand and he calls them a cute couple. There's also this tiny cute moment where Cornelia's is holding on to Caleb's arm on this hill, so that's sweet. Irma's family end up waking up due to the noise and Cornelia decides that the best way to hide Caleb and Blunt is to bury them in the sand. Hold your breath, guys. I've got some evidence to bury. So that happens. And after everyone is back inside, we get this scene. <sighs> uh, I so love having a girlfriend. This is the first time we've heard Caleb refer to uh, use the word girlfriend to refer to Cornelia and granted it's not the most positive comment in the world 
But this is just Cornelia and Caleb in a nutshell, you know? I saw a post on Twitter once that said, if your girlfriend isn't the most annoying human being you've ever met, is she even your girlfriend? And as soon as I read it, I was like, if that ain't Cornelia and Caleb, though. He loves her, but she is chaotic and he is permanently mystified by it. Jai is for Jill. We have a few little moments in this episode. Near the start of the episode, the witch girls are on a conference call and Crinley expresses that the only thing missing from her holiday to Paris is Caleb. I smell like oh de fabulous. I have daddy's platinum, the caviar is awesome and we're getting seaweed wraps tomorrow. The only thing missing is Caleb. Boys, you're in four kinds of paradise and all you can think about is your next date? Much later in the episode, the Guardians must go to Meridian as Phobos has been freed and the people are under attack. And when they arrive, Caleb is under a trance and is tied up in chains, and Cornelia uses these giant flower things to trap the tracker and blind Raythor long enough for him to drop the chain that he has around Caleb. Ultimately, it's Blunk who saves Caleb through, uh, of all things, his armpit B.O. I wish I was kidding. So does Caleb, I'm sure. <laughs> Caleb must snap out of it! <laughs> Think Blunk later. for knowledge also provides a few moments. Caleb has gathered the guardians and brought them to Kandrakar to inform the oracle about Elion's kidnapping. When they arrive at the fortress, Halinor is already questioning the mage about why she didn't tell them of Elion's fate sooner, which immediately panics Cornelia, and we get this little moment where Caleb looks at her sadly and apologetically. But why didn't you tell us of Elion's fate immediately? The sorceress cursed my ring. I could not use it safely until now. Wait, what fate? Where's Elion? Not only did he fail to protect his queen, but he also failed to protect his girlfriend's best friend. So he's feeling incredibly guilty right now. Back at the palace, the witch gang are fighting Nerissa, and just minutes into the fight, Nerissa imprisons Caleb in a cage made of lightning. I wonder why? Cornelia takes it as well as you would expect. You so don't want to be messing with my boyfriend. Quintessence. I love it when she does that. We love a girl protecting her man. Later in the fight, we get this little moment where Cornelia realizes Caleb has been freed. <gasps> Caleb, you're free! The cage vanished when Nerissa did. And that's it for Chaos for Knowledge. Um, Caleb isn't in the next two episodes since they are entirely Earth-based, so we'll skip right on ahead to Ennis for Narcissist. <music> Ennis for Narcissist is a Cornelia-centric episode and there are some good moments in here. So the episode opens with the girls and Caleb on Kanjakar explaining what happened in the previous episodes, that the Knights of Destru Destruction were attacking the Guardians' families. Well adds that they also attacked Matt, which prompts the sweet moment of Cornelia and Caleb looking at each other and then holding hands. I think what's happening here is that they both recognise the danger that they are in. If Nerissa is attacking the people the Guardians love most, including their love interests, then that means that Caleb's in danger. And also, if she decides to attack the people that Caleb loves, then Cornelia's in danger. They're feeling freaked out by the loss of Matt and they just want to hold on to each other for support. And like as if like holding on to each other is going to protect them from getting taken away. Of course what they don't realise is that Caleb is actually not in any danger at all and in fact out of everyone the Guardians know he's probably at least risk of being attacked by Nerissa. But they won't find that out until the following episode. The girls head back to Earth since they're all signed up to participate in this school PTA car wash fundraiser thing and par for the course that is exactly when the Knights of Destruction decide to attack Ganjakar. The girls head back and start battling, but unbeknownst to them, Nerissa is on her vigilante shit again and is manipulating Halinor into absorbing the Oromirs. And what actually happens though is that it backfires and all five Oromirs go straight into Cornelia. 
the other girls instantly lose their powers and literally fall out of the sky, and then we get this incredible scene. Okay, uniting's out! How about panicking? Caleb is very much enjoying looking at his girlfriend in her older and even buffer form. Like I said in Episode of Facades, he loves her no matter how she looks, but he's only human and he's certainly enjoying the show. We also get this little moment. Yay! Use your lightning! We love a supportive boyfriend. Since the girls can't use their powers now, they're basically setting ducks, so Caleb tries to lure Cor away from them and Cornelia has to swoop in and save him. Bet you can't catch me. <laughs> okay, lost that bet. Caleb! Whoa! Well, look out! As always, we love Cornelia rescuing her dude in distress. Let's just watch the next scene and then we can talk about it. This isn't safe. Get inside. I'm the only one who can do this now. Wow. Even when she's self-sacrificing, she's self-centered. <laughs> I can't save your behinds and fight at the same time. Cornelia, what are you doing? Protecting you. You can't do that. We're teammates, not sidekicks. We have to get out of here. Do we? I mean, what if Cornelia's right? First time for everything. We can't just leave her out there alone. We're her friends. So obviously, first of all, we've got Cornelia just flying around with Caleb under her arm, which is both cute and hilarious. This guy's clearly like, put me down. If you drop me, I'm toast. So she drops Caleb and herself back onto the ground and tells everyone it's not safe before trapping them all inside this sort of magic dome made of fire. Caleb asks what she's doing, clearly not happy about her going out and fighting the knights all alone. I like this because it shows he's not afraid to call her out when he thinks that she's being ridiculous and you need to have a strong basis of a relationship for that but Cornelia just responds that she's protecting them. Inside the dome, Caleb says that they have to get out and Tarani wonders if Cornelia could be right which leads everyone, including Caleb, to just stare at her. That always cracks me up. It could be that he's just judging Tarani suggesting that they leave Cornelia out there alone which is the more romantic reading of the scene but I also enjoy the idea that Caleb is just like, when has Cornelia ever been right? Like, girl, what are you talking about? <laughs> the girls and Caleb fall back to Earth and leave Cornelia to fight the knights. At one point, Tridar captures Cornelia and we get this brilliant piece of dialogue. <laughs> Even the prettiest flower gets brittle with the cold. Brittle and likely to snap. You think I'm pretty? Uh, sorry, Coldzilla, I already have a boyfriend. As for ice, if it's not diamonds, I'm not interested! That girl just never passes up an opportunity to talk about her boyfriend. <laughs> Towards the end of the episode, Libba reveals that the mage is actually Nerissa, and Cornelia and Caleb, still the only ones in the group who can fight, team up to attack her. But she teleports out, because of course she does. And that's it for this episode. Next up, we have a Caleb-centric episode, and it's my favourite episode of the entire series. And there's definitely content in there, so let's get into it. Okay, so quick context for this episode. On Earth, the girls are preparing for Vance Michael Justin's concert in Heatherfield, which Irma has secured the rights to broadcast through the school's radio station. Meanwhile, on Meridian, Caleb has just found out that Nerissa is his mother. Surprise! <laughs> so Caleb is understandably having a bad day, but on Earth, Cornelia is super excited to see her celebrity crush in the flesh, telling her friends... Look, I'm just saying, Caleb's my guy. But if BMJ happened to kiss me tonight... You said he hates being called BMJ. He does, and I didn't! When I was younger, I would hear this line and think Cornelia was a wee hussy. But I'm older now, and I would make out with Dove Cameron in a heartbeat even if my boyfriend were standing two feet away from us. So I can relate to Cornelia's struggle here. And after all, she's making it clear that VMJ will never compare to Caleb. He's just hot. 
and this becomes apparent later in the episode. Elsewhere, Caleb decides to confront Narissa at her hideout and she promptly locks him in a cell and spends the next few hours waffling at him. Eventually, she tries to convince him to join her side and she actually drops Cornelia into the conversation as a way to encourage him. I will share the power of the Heart of Meridian and make the entire universe bow to your will. And you wouldn't have to hurt Cornelia. Just keep her and the Guardians out of harm's way. Out of our way. And I think this says two things. One, that Nerissa knows these kids way too well and it's beyond disturbing. But two, that she sees Cornelia as a significant roadblock in luring Caleb to the dark side so she needs to work around it in order to win him over. It's just another testament to how strong their relationship is by this point in the series that Nerissa sees her as such a significant problem in trying to bring Caleb onto her side. Back in Heatherfield, Julian and Blunk literally drop into the stage in the middle of VMJ's concert, but Vance is an idiot and thinks it's special effects. The next thing we see is Cornelia pushing the back door of the venue open and stepping outside, looking slightly traumatised, having just been informed about Nerissa being Caleb's mother. And we get this fantastic scene. Nerissa is Caleb's mother? And I thought my mom had issues. I cannot believe we had to leave my concert early. Look, Miss Ego Trip Credit Hog Slave Driver, I have a boyfriend in crisis here. Not to mention a universe in peril. Just saying it's lousy timing. Guardians, unite! I think this scene is so important for Cornelia's character. Like, remember way back in Return of the Tracker, when the Tracker was after Caleb and Blunk, but Cornelia wanted to stay behind to hold their place in line for the VMJ movie? And that was him on a screen, like, not in person like he is now. He was definitely not kissing her on the movie screen. Yet now we see her walking away from a chance to meet VMJ, his face to my face, without a second thought because Caleb is in trouble. Not only has she grown as a person, but her devotion to Caleb is so much stronger now. She couldn't care less about some celebrity, even her favourite celebrity. Caleb is all that matters to her here. The girls travel to Mount Thanos through a fold, which is impossible, as I discuss in my mysteries video up here. Um, and Cornelia carries Julian through, which I just think is sweet. You know, we, we stand the daughter-in-law carrying the dad. Um, at the mountain, the rest of the girls battle the knights, whilst Cornelia focuses on trying to get into the cave where Caleb is. She takes on Halinor, and when she's knocked back, she pulls out another iconic, violently protective girlfriend line. We gotta get inside! You so do not want to get between me and my squeeze! Go! Go! I'll catch up! Cornelia straight up murders Halinor. Okay, not really, but like it's close. She dropped a whole like load of rocks on her head. Like, and she heads into the tunnel. But when she's blocked by Cor, she tells Julian and Blunk to go on without her. She wants to get to Caleb, but she has powers and they don't. And she would rather someone gets in and saves him, even if it's not her. So she stays behind and fights Cor. There's such a desperation in her voice that it honestly breaks me and sometimes I just want to give Crystal Khalil an award. But thankfully she does have a daytime Emmy so that works. Caleb eventually emerges from the tunnel and Cornelia runs to him. Caleb? I need to get back to Meridian. Now. I'll go with you! He just needs time. But if you could just wait I know I'd make you see me this scene breaks my heart. I don't think it's a slight on Cornelia that Caleb shrugs her off. He's just really traumatised and probably doesn't know what to say to her. And I think this is what this is supposed to represent, you know? He can't even talk to Cornelia, who is the one person he can always talk to. That's how hurt he is. He's just completely broken. I also like that we get this little moment between Cornelia and Julian. We don't get a lot of that through the series, but anytime we do, I think it shows how much Julian really cares about Cornelia and he obviously, you know, likes her and is glad that she's with Caleb. We can also see how um, helpless Cornelia feels. She just wants to make things better, but what can she do? You know, what can she possibly do to make any of this okay? She can't. And so she just stands there and watches because she's lost. 
and so the girls head back to the concert hall. We don't know what happens after this episode, but I like to think that Cornelia eventually went to Meridian and once Caleb had cooled off a bit, they had a lovely heart to heart about um, where she reminds him of what a good person he is and how he'll never be like his mother. In any case, by the next episode, he's back on Earth hanging out with the girls again. In this episode, the witch gang heads to planet Zambala, where Narissa has glamoured her knights to look like the Guardians and is using them to destroy the jungle. We get a very brief moment of Cornelia and Irma carrying Caleb just as they arrive. Will then orders the group to split up into pairs. Caelan leaves with her grandma, Will and Irma team up, and of course, Cornelia grabs Caleb. Cornelia and Caleb try and use a tactic of having Cornelia distract Cadma whilst Caleb grabs her staff, but it fails and the pair end up getting trapped together in a floating magic box and Cadma calls them pathetic. You have much to learn, Earth Guardian. Hey, I'm not the one who started this crunchy granola free for all. <laughs> No, you're the one who hoped to distract us while your ally launched his attack. <laughs> Pathetic. <sighs> Lol. <laughs> That's pretty much it for this episode, but it's worth noting that in literally every scene, Crilly and Caleb are drawn standing really close together, together, so the animators were definitely shipping it. Cues for Quarry is a Will-centric episode, but whoever wrote it was definitely a big Cornelia and Caleb shipper, and there's a fair bit to go through here. So near the start of the episode, the girls are in the Silver Dragon basement, listening to Will rant about her dad's new fiancée, Serena. Cornelia suddenly panics, wondering if Serena could be Nerissa, since they'd, she had previously glamoured herself to trick Caleb's father into falling for her, but Tarani quickly shuts her down and reminds her of what happened all the way back in service to the community. Whoa! Nightmare thought here! Caleb's dad got tricked into falling for Nerissa! What if Will's dad- Do not get her started! The girls head to Zambala and we get this cute reunion scene between Cornelia and Caleb, the latter of whom has been living on Zambala for, since the debacle in the previous episode. Presumably it's been a little while since they've seen each other and Caleb's little, yeah, it's just so adorable. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there are a few little moments throughout this episode of the two of them looking at each other. First is right after this reunion scene where Cornelia is staring at Caleb. Girlie is just admiring his bone structure here. Then later in the episode when Cadma calls Cornelia forward, her and Caleb exchange glances. And then at the swamp, Cornelia and Caleb tag team fighting Cor, with Cornelia creating a distraction and Caleb kicking him in the face. And they do that a lot, actually, during the latter half of this season, and I'm living for it, honestly. After the fight in the swamp, we get this scene where Will and Kama discuss Will becoming Elion's region, and twice during the scene, Cornelia and Caleb look at each other confused. Let's take a look, and then we can discuss. They were outmatched. It's only a matter of time before Nerissa is ours, and we claim another heart. Claim? How great will that be? Whoa. You want to absorb the heart of Meridian? Wait, who said absorb? We just want to get it away from Nerissa. Is that the royal we? It is common sense. Elian lost the power of the heart once. Clearly, even after she's rescued, she will require a regent. Someone she can trust. Oh, and you're just the girl for the job? No. Wait, why not me? Two hearts, Will? All that power in one person's hands? Kinda scary. So we say Cornelia and Caleb at the same time look at each other and say claim because they don't agree with what Will and Cadmar are saying. And then a few seconds later, they look at each other again when Will is getting defensive. I like this scene because, again, we see how much Cornelia and Caleb are on the same page these days. I think it also makes sense for them to be so concerned by Will's actions in this conversation because out of the entire group, they are the two closest to Elion. Realistically, if anyone should be working as her regents, it should be them. Also, the fact Will is acting like Nerissa is probably even more concerning to Caleb as her son and by extension Cornelia as Caleb's girlfriend. Down in the quarry, Nerissa, Cadma, and Will run into a tunnel and are trapped inside by Shagon, leading us into this scene. The 
They're trapped inside the tunnel. Not for long, they're not. Cornelia, look out! <gasps> She'll be okay, but she's down for the count. But how are we supposed to save Will and Cadma without her? Uh, first things first. <laughs> how do we save ourselves? From here on out, Cornelia is completely out of the battle. But what's important is that instead of carrying on fighting, Caleb spends the entire rest of the battle on the floor cradling her. And I think this is such a significant moment for them because when has Caleb ever given up the opportunity to fight? Especially when they're down so many people already. But at this point, he can see that Cornelia is defenseless, so he has to protect her, even if that means leaving Irma, Tarani, and Helen to fight alone. Also, the fact that he was watching for her at the start and yelled for her to look out, the fact that he ran to catch her before he, she hit the ground, the fact that he has his hand on her face. Everything about this scene is just perfect, to be honest. <laughs> When Will and Irma finally re-emerge from the cave, Helen and Tarani are holding the knights back with a barrier of fire to protect Cornelia and Caleb. Cornelia wakes up and this is what plays out. Oh man, what hit me? Nothing like what's about to. Tarani, hey Lynn, get over here! There's a plan, right? Tell me there's a plan. The plan. I'm about to teletransport for the first time. Hang on! Uh, guys? Uh, yeah? Oh my gosh, I put you in the wall! No, but you came close. <sighs> okay, not trying that again anytime soon. So as you can see, Caleb continues protecting and supporting Cornelia in the quarry and when they go back to the temple, which I just think shows the level of devotion that he has for her and the comfort that she finds in him and the strength of their bond and I just, I love them. I love them. There isn't a lot of Cornelia and Caleb content in ours for Relentless but there are a few moments so we can talk about them. Near the start of the episode, Witch, Caleb, Yanlin, and Blunk are attacked in a cave by the Knights of Destruction, and we get another scene of Caleb and Cornelia tag teaming Kor. <laughs> we also get this little scene where Will is hurt and Cornelia and Caleb look after her, which I just think is really sweet. Sorry, this time the Guardians do not unite. Will, quick! Later in the episode, the team are fighting atop Mount Thanos, and once again, Cornelia and Caleb are tag teaming Carr, with bonus Cornelia protecting Caleb content. The firepower we can get right here! <laughs> Had enough? <laughs> The knights are here. I wonder where Yan Lin is. Don't know, but I hope she's doing better than us. There's also this little moment where they strategize together. Ah! If Nerissa has Yan Lin, they're probably both in the cave. Only one way to find out. And that's it for Relentless. Caleb is actually out of the plot for the next three episodes and doesn't appear at all, but he does get mentioned by Cornelia a couple of times, so we'll look at those moments. The plot of S is for Cell focuses on a battle of the bands taking place at the school, as well as the massive narrative element that is Matt finally returning from the abyss he's been trapped in for the past seven episodes. At the end of the episode, Matt's band perform a song that he wrote for Will called The Will to Love at the Battle of the Bands, prompting Cornelia to say, Caleb is so writing me a song. As seen in Walt This Way, Caleb can play guitar, so who knows, maybe Corny will get her wish one day. I did read a fanfic once where she literally tied him to a chair until he wrote her a song, but yeah, I'm not encouraging that one, particularly. <laughs> Tears for Trauma is probably the darkest episode of the entire series, but it starts out quite innocuous. Well, if you overlook the very questionable plot of Nerissa flirting with high school boys. 
like yeah physically she's a teenager but mentally she's in her 60s and these boys are the same age as her son and this is just all kinds of wrong what's even more wrong though is when cornelia traumatizes her friends by inadvertently bringing up incest <laughs> if caleb ever looked at her like that ew hello nurse is his mom oh right gag hands down one of the funniest and most messed up moments of the entire series but probably best Caleb isn't in this episode. I know it's titled for T is for Trauma, but seeing your mother who has turned herself into a teenager chatting up guys your own age is probably a level of trauma that this boy just doesn't need. I've said it before and I'll say it again. We need to get Caleb a therapist. Like, this boy has gone through too much at this point. <laughs> Skipping ahead to V is for victory, there are some Cornelia and Caleb moments, but they don't exactly look like Cornelia and Caleb moments. And if I present them without context, you will all be scarred for life. But the show originally presented them without context to us, and I had to live through that, so so do you. But before we even get to that, we have this little moment early in the episode. The gang are all at the diner getting ice cream following while coming second at the swimming competition, and Caleb has his arm around Cornelia. It's cute. Later in the episode, the girls are enrolling Phobos at Sheffield Institute because this episode is insane, and this time we get to see how this bunch of maniacs keep scamming Meridianites into their school. Caleb is on the phone to Principal Knickerbocker pretending to be a head teacher, Phobos' dad, I, I don't know. But while he's on the phone, he makes a mistake, and his expression when Cornelia corrects him is just the cutest thing. Yes, I uh, appreciate your concerns. Uh -huh. <coughs> Certainly. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, of course. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, uh, of course. We'll send his transcript shortly. And fo- Philip! Philip. Uh, uh, um, yes, uh, Philip will we'll be there first thing in the morning. Thank you again, Principal Knickerbocker. Meet Sheffield's- Ahem. <clears throat> um, meet Sheffield's newest foreign exchange student. Caleb isn't around for most of the episode from here on, but let me present you with some moments of sheer trauma to endure. Phobos is now a Sheffield Institute student, and at lunch, this happens. Ah! Followed by this. You hardly got any lunch, Cornelia. You want some popcorn? Thanks, and take your time. Ew, you guys, I think he's totally hitting on me. Ugh, something's really wrong with him. I I'm just saying. Cornelia is, understandably, horrified that Phobos is flirting with her. Like, I know we all fancy Phobos, he draws the cat eyes sharp enough to kill a man, but if you were one of the witch girls, you probably wouldn't be flattered by him hitting on you. Luckily for Cornelia, though, Phobos isn't actually hitting on her. Caleb is. These are actually the Cornelia and Caleb scenes I was talking about because Caleb, Matt and Blanc have actually been glamoured as Phobos for half the episode. Which means that Caleb is an absolute agent of chaos and was deliberately messing with Cornelia. Unfortunately we don't get to see her speak to him about this because I fully expect her to be furious but then eventually see the funny side. But I really enjoy this because it reveals a more playful side to their relationship where Caleb pranks her. It's also just really nice to see Caleb having fun since they're usually so caught up in whatever the evil drama is that he, they don't really get a lot of time to just be themselves. So, you know, as much as he's pranking her, what he's actually doing is really sweet. Bringing her cake, holding her hand, getting her popcorn. These are the kind of cute things they would do together if he wasn't always stuck on ready and fighting evil. And okay, yeah, he did cause her to get cake on her outfit, which I'm sure she was fuming about. But overall, this is actually very sweet. And I wish we got more moments like that between them when one of them isn't glamoured as Phobos. Just them being cute, eating cake and popcorn together, being teenagers in love instead of soldiers on the front line. You know, can we be 17? That's all that I want to do. There's one Cornelia and Caleb scene in W is for Witch, and it is a great one. The gang are at Halloween fair when Cornelia's cat Napoleon gets trapped in amongst the prizes of one of the carnival games. Instead of, I don't know, just pointing out to the guy that a living cat was on the shelf, Caleb decides to win Napoleon back by playing the game, leading to this. Ugh, if Count Dorkula knew how close he came to becoming Snake Chow? Oh my gosh, Napoleon! 
Help me. Leave that to me. Try again, sweetie. Just gotta put the right spin on it. Oh, totally. There's the cat. This scene is so good. Some things never change, and Caleb trying to be a big macho man is one of them. He thinks he's gonna win the game because he's Mr. Big Shot Rebel Leader, and he totally bungles it. Krillia acts as though she's being supportive and that she believes he can do it, but then she uses her powers to make sure he wins. And by doing that, she gave him his moment of pride, letting him feel like the hero. It's such a sweet moment. She could have mocked him like she's done so many times before, but she lets him have this one. She just wants to see him be happy. And then she gives him a kiss because in his eyes, he's just rescued her cat. It's adorable. They're precious. Oh, and then Caleb does this little after you gesture with his arm at the end of the scene, which I just think is really sweet. So. Texas for Xanadu gives us a few scenes to go over. Near the start of the episode, the girls return to the Silver Dragon basement after a particularly brutal battle, and the girls are complaining about how they've been fighting 24-7 since Phobos claimed the rest of Seal at the end of the previous episode. However, Cornelia isn't impressed with their comments and says, Look, Caleb needs us on Meridian. And we'll go back soon, but we need some crash time or we'll just drop. And I think this speaks volumes. There was a time when Cornelia would have been the most likely to complain about having to spend all her time fighting evil, but not now. Not when Caleb and his friends are out there fighting for their lives. She would give up all of her time to be there by his side fighting alongside him. She's grown so much as a person and I just think it's really incredible to see. Later in the episode, a massive battle is taking place in Ruddin involving every character you can possibly think of. Krilly and Caleb are once again tag teaming enemies, this time Frost and Crimson. Caleb kicks Frost off of Crimson's back and Cornelia traps Crimson in between some blocks, but then Cornelia gets wrecked by Sniffer and we see Caleb panic. Let's watch. It's just a really nice scene of them working together and Caleb worrying about Cornelia and attempting to help her, although it doesn't pan out for him because he gets decked in the face by Drake. Not, not intentionally by Drake, by Drake's unconscious body. The Guardians decide to fold everyone out of the Infinite City since it's obvious they are losing tremendously, but they close the fold before they realise that Caleb had stopped to push Blunk out of the way of a spear and sent the two of them into the water. When everyone arrives in Kandrakar, Cornelia scans the room before realising someone is missing. Wait, where's Caleb? <sighs> the fear in her voice breaks my heart. Now I know that they had a plan for if anyone got caught, Raythor was supposed to get them put on the Abyss of Shadows so that he could break them out, but it makes sense that she's still worried because even if that is the case, there's still a chance it could go very wrong. And it does. <laughs> Now, for some reason in the following episode, Will doesn't bother to wake Cornelia and bring her along to rescue Caleb from death row, which was certainly a choice, but whatever. As such, there's no Cornelia and Caleb content in Wise for Yield, so we'll just skip on over to the finale. In the final episode of the series, Phobos' army are still fighting the rebels on Kanjakar, but a newly turbocharged Cedric has decided he would like to destroy downtown Heatherfield. Raythor says the girls should go and defend their world, but Cornelia doesn't want to leave Caleb. And so we get the greatest kiss in the whole damn show. Good earthlings, prepare your world for battle! But Caleb! <laughs> Already lost Meridian and Kandrakar. Earth must not fall. Go! This scene is everything. It really is. Krillia once again displays a determination to fight by Caleb's side, but Caleb knows she has to go and defend her own world. But since they are literally fighting for their lives out here, he can't send her off without one last kiss, and he makes it worth it. <laughs> Caleb senses they're about to get attacked though and then he blocks Tracker's chain from hitting Cornelia with his sword and then still with his arm around her he tells her she has to go and protect Earth and as Cornelia heads towards the fold back to Earth she stops 
and takes one last look at the man she loves and it breaks my heart. <laughs> the rest of the episode sees them fighting on two different planets so the next and final scene we get of them in the entire series is in the epilogue where we see them walking along a snowy mountain with their arms around each other. They're also the only couple in the scene to be walking like that and I'm not saying it's because they are the best couple and have the closest relationship but I'm also not not saying that either. <laughs> And that's it! That's the entire timeline of Cornelia and Caleb and the Witch TV series. Thank you so much for coming with me on this journey and letting me ramble on about my favourite ship for, Jesus, 38 pages. Um, this has genuinely been the most fun video for me to write. I, I had such a blast writing this and I've had such a good time just reliving this beautiful love story from the beginning and getting to actually go through it in order and look at all of these scenes and analyse them and really dive deep into this relationship has been something I have had so much fun doing. Um, obviously they are my favourite couple and just getting to sit and talk to you guys about them and I really appreciate if you are here and you are watching this I so appreciate you coming along with me on this journey because I don't really have anyone in my real life to talk to about Witch. Um, I have friends who've watched Witch but none of them are obsessed the way that I am and a lot of them it's just a cartoon that they liked when they were a kid or a comet that they liked when they were a kid. It's not something that's still a part of their lives now. Um, so having this platform to talk to you guys um, gives me an outlet to sit and talk about my favourite thing and I you you don't know how much I appreciate that. I really do. Um, it means a lot to me that you guys like uh, coming along for my witch videos and allow me to sit and ramble at you um, about, about my favourite thing in the whole world. So thank you for being here. Um, I will be back doing more relationship timelines for the other couples in the series uh, and thankfully they won't be anywhere near as long as this one because none of the others have as much content so they won't. I've been recording for so so long and my throat is burning so uh, yeah it will be really good to have one that's not as long as this one um, but thank you again for watching and I'll see you in whatever I post next. Bye! Hmm.